Hey, wake up. Hey, wake up. Wake up. I need your help. You never guess what happened. Take a guess. Yeah, no. I didn't lose no nut in November. Who do you think I am? Try again. Yeah, my C6 is broken again. How did you, how did you know? Huh. Real funny, huh? Anyways, get up, get up, get dressed. I need your help. I'll fill you in in a moment. Let's go. Yeah, so let me tell you what happened. I woke up on Sunday morning and it was business as usual. I got up early. I was gonna go on with my day and I thought it was gonna be a good day. <sighs> ah, what a beautiful morning. It's gonna be a good day. The first thing I did, I went to the gas station because you know, a bitch gets thirsty, right? So I pulled up to the gas station. That's when I noticed something. Fucking Sunday. Only day I get to drive the car. Turn it on. We got this bullshit now. Look at this bullshit. No oil pressure. Okay, I gotta add tire to this shit too. It was good the last time I drove it. Now it's not. What type of crippled old man shit is this? So in the morning when I was putting my shirt on, for some reason, somehow, I messed up my neck really bad. And right now I can't turn left. And then I get in the car, no tire pressure. So I go to the first gas station where I always fill up. Pump's not working. I go to the second gas station, pump's working. I put my card in, I start filling up the tire. I don't see any progress. And my tire pressure dropped all the way down to 10. So it was actually taking off air from my tire, not putting it on. So now I'm here driving on 10 PSI trying to find the next gas station that has a pump. That's when I noticed my oil pressure just says triple X. Just kind of sus. I was just trying to go to the gym, then go get some breakfast, and now we don't have oil pressure. Nope, no oil. If we have oil in here, I think I'm just gonna send it, just drive it like this, because I don't think the oil pump would just stop working because it's literally inside of the engine. Check this out. Taste it, smell it, smell it. Smells like good oil. So this is gonna be my diagnostic process. I checked that we have oil, so that means that we should have oil pressure. I wanted to disconnect the sensor to see if that will help, maybe a bad sensor. So this one is still a possibility. Third one, I'm gonna drive the car. If it doesn't blow up, that means that the oil pump is working and that we do have oil pressure and it's just a bad sensor. So I'm gonna go drive it. If it doesn't blow up, then we'll just swap out the sensor next time we're here. One day I saw him, he was delivering the this was years ago. We was 429. Semi-hemis. Nah, this is so freaking mint. I wasn't even expecting a car, I mean, I just came for some coffee. All right, so I drove it. Clearly it didn't blow up, so guess what we get to do now? Swap out the sensor. And guess what arrived in the mail today? You're a genius, yup. You got an oil pressure sensor right here, AC Delco. I hope it's not as cheap as the exhaust bar from even my guy. That shit was trash. But let's get started. Hold my flasher, bro. The first thing we gotta do is probably get ready for how this thing takes apart. And I did it last year. I completely don't remember anything, but I guess I'll figure it out. I mean, you're gonna help me, so it'll be a lot easier. It reminds me of the time where my car broke down and I had to fix it when I didn't want to. Oh shit, it's been every other time, huh? Every other week, something breaks. Grab it from that side. There we go. Lift it up. There we go. You know, the 2023 Prius doesn't sound so bad now. You get all the fuel economy. It's probably reliable as shit. I'd say it's probably a win-win. So do you have your Corvette yet, or um, are you still thinking of getting one? Well, as a young Corvette owner, I'm gonna tell you not to be discouraged. I'm sure you're not gonna have as much bad luck as me with this car. They're not really bad cars. Everybody that has them actually seems to enjoy them a lot. And so I think you should get it. And if you get yours and it's still a pain in the ass, then uh, it's not my fault. Don't take my advice then. Yeah, I'm just half-assing. Oops. Yep, that broke. Um, it's okay, I'll zip tie it. I'm just half-assing everything right now. Oh, that broke too. <laughs> All right. Why does stuff keep breaking? Everything's so freaking brittle here am i am i getting that strong newbie gains we're getting pretty close it's only been like five minutes um next thing i think i gotta do is to remove the fuel line um do you have the fuel line disconnect yeah thank you there it is the best five dollars i ever spent and this is actually kind of important 
I almost forgot about this, but there's actually a special procedure for removing the intake and reinstalling it. It has to be in a specific pattern so that I guess you don't warp the manifold. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna play it safe. <laughs> you know, I almost forgot about this. Remember this build badge? Coyote Hub Performance Build Center. <laughs> it's not Coyote Hub no more. We gotta change it up to pushing gears. You gotta get a, a new badge for this. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to tell GM to resend me one of these. See, I told you it wasn't gonna be that hard. It just I didn't even have to take the fuel rails or the cover off. It just comes up with a piece. You gotta you just gotta know how to finesse it. Ah, let's take this off. Alright, so there's the main guy right there that we have to swap out. Now something that I find interesting is that I have the Mighty Mouse catch can, but if you look in there, it actually looks pretty oily on all the ports. Hmm. And I'm not consuming oil. Anyway, this is the valley pan right here. As you can see, it's all flat. It doesn't have any grooves or passages through there. And this is because the Corvette engines do not come with DOD, <clears throat> which is this placement on demand. And pretty much what that does is it shuts off a few cylinders when you're cruising down the street or a highway speed to uh, pretty much save you a little, a little bit of gas. There's a lot of other LS engines that do that, but not with the Corvettes. Here's the proof, you see it's all flat. So There's a pretty interesting connector, never seen one of these. This white piece slides up, and then you're able to pull it off with a little bit of pressure right here in the center. This is like a 28 millimeter, I've never seen this thing before, but you wanna use a really nice crescent wrench to make sure you don't strip it out. I hope this is the right one. I hope this solves the issue. All this freaking work just for this little sensor. Just for the little freaking sensor. Why couldn't GM just put it on the side of the block on the knees or something? Why do you have to make it so complicated? I know on the C5s people like to cut a hole right here in the cowl and pull it out like that. That's so ghetto. I don't know why people do that to their Corvette. You have a Corvette and you're gonna cut a hole right here? I mean, I'd probably do it too. <laughs> you notice how I put everything back together before even testing it? That's how much I trust myself. Or maybe because I'm not gonna take it apart again if it doesn't end up being fixed. But at least it's done. You want to start it up? Fine, I'll do it. All right, we'll see. Wish me luck. All right. Come on, car. Come on, car. Come on. It's moving, huh? 75 pounds of pressure. I think it's pretty good. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. And I did figure out why my oil was uh, all over my intake. It turns out my Mighty Mouse catch can was completely full. So I forgot to drain it. I guess the last two oil changes. So that's what happens. Perfect timing, huh? Because we just finished it. And my brother just called me. He says he's on his way. We're going to go on a cruise. It's Thanksgiving morning. So we're going to enjoy it. A little time with the family and then we're gonna feast so i guess you come and help me next time this thing breaks again so i'll be waiting for you till next time my glizzy goblins